All right, we're live. All right. So I want to hear. Yeah. Good. Hey. Yo. What What's is up? On? Oh, you know, it's another week down. More dentist stuff this week for me. I had my deep cleanings that I needed to get before my extraction. Uh, so I have. Oh, right. You had mentioned. I have uh, getting your wisdom teeth out. Yeah, I have, well, my last wisdom tooth um, next week. Oh. So I have two more appointments left, and then I'm back to, like, normal everything. And that's the extraction next week, and then a follow-up a month after to make sure that there's no further bone loss in that area. So you're, this is the second time you will have been having some wisdom teeth removed? It's the second time I've had why wisdom would, teeth. Why would they not just do the, all the first time? Because like, I couldn't afford it. I told them not to. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Yeah. My I benefits at work did not cover all of it, and I was couldn't be out of pocket a few thousand or whatever they wanted for the full thing. I get it. I was lucky enough. I had all my wisdom teeth out when I was like a teenager so it was like my parents insurance i didn't deal with any of that this is the call to anybody who is still under parents insurance or any of that sort of stuff fuck if you have wisdom teeth that may eventually need to get out just get that shit done don't wait yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah for sure for sure it's a pain but uh mm. that's really it for like sp special stuff i guess <laughs> for me well good luck yes thank you a fun going uh, under anesthesia. I am very familiar with that process now. Mm, I don't do any. I just do the local. I don't do like the sleep or whatever. Oh, when I did my wisdom tooth out, I, they put me under. That was the first time I'd ever had anesthesia. Oh, okay. I've never actually. Well, I mean, I've had anesthesia when I was like eight or whatever. Whatever age you get like tonsils out or whatever. Um, okay. But I don't remember it because it was a long, long time ago. Every other time has been. Like, just that area, frozen, do the thing, go home. A anesthesia is so weird because, like, yeah, you don't even, like, notice yourself passing out. And then you just wake up and, like, yeah. the time is just gone. Like, you, it's, like, the most sound sleep ever. Like, it's crazy. It must be how, like, RPG protagonists that don't remember stuff at, like, the beginning of a game. That's probably yeah, what they I went under. So. They probably went to the yeah. dentist or something. Right. Right. Yeah. I uh I was at the gym earlier today and I met two people who at one point lived in Calgary. That's weird. Wow. That's ins that, let me tell you how weird that is. I would say 99% of the time when I am speaking to an American, they don't the know only what Calgary thing is. They could tell you about Canada. Yeah. Is I've heard of Vancouver. Sure. And I know there's a French part. Sure. Yeah, okay. Which you would think that's quite a small amount you know about a massive country that is literally right next door to you. But nope. Nope. 99% of the Americans I meet have such little interest in Canada. They know nothing about it other than those two facts. So the fact that I met two people who lived in Calgary at one point was insane to me. Were they together or like separate? That's separate. That is so Someone weird. came over because they saw my gym bag and they were like, oh, I haven't seen one of these gym bags in a, a while since I lived in ca Canada. Are you from there? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, where? And I, and I was like, typically when someone asks me if I'm from Canada, I usually say like, well, are you familiar with Alberta? Because the answer is no. Yes. It's, right. it's not because Vancouver is not in Alberta. Right. But because this person said <clears> they <throat> lived there, I was like, I'll just try it. I, I'm from Calgary. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I lived there for a few years a long time ago. And then That's someone overheard weird. us and oh. just shouted, well, hey, me too. <clears throat> So now you're all going on a three-way date next yeah, Friday. Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, in fact, one of the people even knew my high school, which is a small high school within Calgary. So it was just like, this is the smallest world scenario. I've that ever is, been a part of. that's super weird. <laughs> like it got weirder actually with that by a long shot. Um, so that that was that was pretty interesting. But anyway, cool. That was cool. Yep. Well, that's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, but hey, you know, speaking of teeth, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, top-down perspective. Yeah. yeah. Now with 20% uh, more teeth. Well, soon to be with a, with a few percentage less teeth. Yeah. Yeah, so if anything, you're taking away from the show a little bit. I just want you to know. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> That's yeah. why I'm here. <laughs> um, February 17th, 
we are we are just at the part we like happy first, first off happy horizon forbidden west eve yeah i so i still don't know what my plans are with that because i wasn't going to get it at all for like a bit because elden ring is next week and that yeah. is not enough time for me to like really just dive in but then a friend of mine is saying hey if i get like an extra code i'll sell it to you for like on the cheap i was like oh okay if that happens i'll just buy that then why would they get an extra code the ps5 ps4 version or whatever i think they pre-ordered it or something okay i don't think you get multiple codes i think they just will give they you upgrade both it versions. yeah we're not yeah. sure what's going to go on with that but yeah. i'm probably not going to like i'm not worried about it yeah i mean good luck I'd be surprised if you got an extra code because like when I yeah. redeemed mine, it just gave me both and said, which one would you like to download? Oh, that makes way more sense. Yeah. 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 Because I'm sure Sony understands like we're not going to let you get two copies of this game for one price. Right. Right. So it's already a crazy. Re it is. It is a complete shit show with that game. Is this the last one where they're giving people the free upgrade? Yeah. So it's like if you so you can technically save 10 bucks if you buy the PS4 one. And the only way to do that is either on a PS4 or on the web store. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. You can't do it through the PS5. And but the like the the word the wording for them are exactly the same. Like it's crazy. It is actually hilarious how much they have screwed this up, especially when you compare it to Xbox's smart delivery, where it's like one price, you get everything. Don't even worry about it. Yeah. Um but I guess this is the last time Sony's doing that anyways. Now it's just 70 bucks across the board. Yeah. Anyway, I'm Sean Booker. I'm Paul Fleck. And uh, Paul... Oh, so John's not here. We should say that real quick. John's uh, away for the week. Mm -hmm. Out on assignment. Um. So, Paul, what have, uh, what have you been playing? Uh, this week I've been jumping into Infernax, new game that came out that is basically a modern indie version of, like simon's quest essentially like a my one line review for it is it's like if simon's quest was good because it is a more modernization of like that kind of more open world e adventure game where you're like talking to people in a tavern in a town and like you're getting some side quests to do some stuff you play a character that is essentially just a belmont he's going around with a maze bashing in demons heads and stuff it is extremely gory and adult in a lot of its themes and stuff. Is the jump terrible? No, you can... Um, so, this is a game that you might be able to play and, like, have some enjoyment out of because you can change okay. your direction and momentum in the air. The jump is kind of bad at first because you jump too high, but, like, oh, you can okay. move... Ha like, you can change your direction in mid-jump so that you can, like, fix your landing. I feel like whenever someone makes like a Castlevania, like a, like an original Castlevania like, and I think of like, um, is it bloodstained? Yeah. That was mm -hmm. another. Yeah. I, th I think of that too. It's like, I just personally think this game feels like trash to play. Mm -hmm. I I do not like the character speed. I do not get, like a horrible jump. And what about, okay, here's another question. How far back do you get smacked? Is there back smack? There is back smack. Um, I would say maybe half of the distance of like an original Castlevania. So there is, it's there, but it's not as far back as like an NES game would maybe. All right. Yeah, this is Game Pass, right? This is on Game Pass. Yep. I'm playing it on the Steam version, but it's the exact same thing. So, uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, it is. So I don't like Simon's Quest. Uh, I kind of liked the ideas that it had, but. I always thought it played like shit. It was way too obscure uh, in what you had to do, and things about it were just kind of, like, not very great. This does a lot of those same ideas, but with a more modern touch, and it does feel old to people, maybe, who are used to just playing, like, newer modern modern games, indie or AAA or whatever. Uh, but it is definitely doing it in an homage type thing or like kind of a recreation of how that style was, but without all the weird trappings of it actually being like a one-to-one -one sort of that thing. Uh, yeah, so they modernized it. Yeah. But that being said, like if you don't like any of that sort of thing, you probably still won't like this. The jump is a little too high. Like I said, you do have to like 
worry a little bit too much about uh, adjusting your landing uh, by changing like your direction in the air sometimes for some of the platforming. And this is all stuff that I think is great because in the original like the original content that or games like this, you just had a certain way you jumped. And if you missed it, you missed it. Like you couldn't adjust or whatever. So uh, yeah, it's a modernization of that old style. It has a lot of Zelda 2 uh, dungeon stuff going on in it too, which again, I love Zelda 2. It's my favorite NES Zelda game. So uh, modernized. All two of them? Yep. It's true. Right. Um, so like a more modernized version of that is pretty cool. It ha- It is definitely... It takes glee in being super over the top and it's like kill animations when you die or like right. you killing enemies or whatever. There's moral choices in there where you can decide to do like a good or bad choice. There is a morality system. As far as I can tell from the notes I've read, the release notes, they will have different endings and they somehow have different ways that game can end depending on like how far good and how like far bad you are in that that there's like an ultimate evil an evil a good and an ultimate good ending or something like this uh yeah it's cool it's just super fun to play uh i like that style of game from back in the day and i like it even more without all the bullshit that those replaying those games comes with these days like bad controls and all that sort of stuff uh not a whole lot like the perfect kind of game where it's like i like I'm glad it, Game Pass has like the cloud integration. It's like, do I actually want to download this or do I just want to like try it out and see if I even enjoy this? And then oh. I can decide, oh, I'll oh yeah. It, or like on your phone with a controller. I do recommend a controller just f- completely. But so, I mean, even on the console, you, you can, and on the PC, you can just load it from the cloud. Oh, you mean like of, in, rather than just downloading it first? Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, if you like, like if, you liked Simon's Quest or like thought that maybe it had some cool stuff going for it, but and uh, you liked Zelda 2 and all that, those kind of old adventure side scrolling type games. This might be worth taking a look into. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, it does have some problems that I have with it personally, in that I don't know for sure, but the if you can turn it down, the screen shake is unbearable for me in some spots. Uh, it does a lot of okay. screen shake. There is flashing lights and just like all the accessibility type stuff that some a lot of times indies do not put it, options for in their game. I'm not 100% sure if there's options for that in here. I had somebody actually ask me if there was a way to like turn down the gore and all that sort of stuff as well because it does get quite, even like cartoony, very violent and bloody. And I'm not sure, but like that would have been a cool thing for them to include as well to turn it down just a little bit. Kind of seems like part of like the motif of this game because all I've watched is like the trailer that was on like the Microsoft store or the Xbox store or whatever. And, and it shows like, like somebody getting their face smashed in or something like, yeah. It definitely shows like a lot of like bosses getting destroyed and like the gory explosions or whatever. So it is very much, th- yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, but like, it would feel like it's like asking Carrion to like tone it down a bit and it's like well the whole that's kind of the whole point of the game though so like you know yeah uh i would say it's less the point more of an artistic choice that they like obviously don't want to put in a thing to like lessen but because like if you took that stuff out it's still a pretty solid just adventure game that you could enjoy so like if blood and gore and like body horror and viscera and stuff, if that sort of stuff does kind of bother you or at least an overload of it, it might not be for you either because that is definitely very much a stylistic thing that they wanted to do and they did fully. Uh, yeah, that thing is cool. Um, it's on Game Pass, so you can install it and play it. That's all really all right. I've been doing. I'm checking out a few things. First off, uh continuing the game pass train um crossfire x came out this is a sequel to the biggest competitive shooter in the world yeah as far as i un- understand it huge in china and the asia um, se- yeah 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 i believe uh i believe that was crossfire so this is technically like a updated version of it for this the is West. the remedy one right 
they had well, a hand in? Remedy only did the campaign. Is that in here? So it is. Yeah. Unfortunately, there's a bug where it's locked away. <laughs> oh, it's no. Supposed to be, it's supposed to be free for Game Pass subscribers. There, so there's like two campaigns. Okay. I believe the first one is supposed to be free for Game Pass subscribers. Okay. When I played it on the weekend, it was locked. And I think that's supposed to be that's a bug. You oh, don't okay. have Game Pass and you do download this game because the, the game is free to play. I believe it's like 10 bucks per campaign. Um, so I'm just kind of uh, I don't want to spend 10 bucks on this campaign if I'm supposed to get it through Game Pass. I'm just kind of waiting for that to be resolved. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the multiplayer is still available and free to play. That's not done by Remedy. Right. Um, I think this game kind of feels like trash to play. <laughs> Bummer. Um, it it kind of feels like what I would assume a like mobile shooter you know like a, th that they put a lot of work into like i almost think of like what if they took like call of duty Warzone uh, or PUBG mobile and then ported that version of it to a console i, th I feel like that's what this feels like. so like porting call of duty mobile literally to like your xbox would be that's, it I feel would like be that's kind of what it looks like which i know that's not the case because this is a counter-strike clone so it was definitely not mobile first and such but anyway right um I just still feel like it feels bad. It could also be because I'm I'm not great at the game. This is an extremely twitch shooter. The time to kill is very fast. Oh. Um, so it is a lot of like, oh, I'm dead before I even saw someone in the area or knew someone was looking at me. Yeah. Kind of stuff. You do not heal health. Um, although there is like a perk that you... So there's like a whole system of like you get experience during a match and then you can trade in the experience for different perks one is like being able to turn somewhat invisible and there's one that's the, the top one is called the boogeyman okay where you become the boogeyman where you get like two like uh like assault rifles in each hand and you're dual wielding and whatnot which they have come out mr boo himself which i guess is the the higher up on the dev team and is and he goes by the name mr boo has come out and said that the boogeyman is too overpowered they're going to nerf the boogeyman Okay, um, sure. Which is just a funny concept. I <laughs> at no point have I played as the boogeyman because I I was not getting enough experience to trick to cash it in for that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just don't think it looks very good. It actually kind of reminds me a little bit about what is that? It's a Game Pass. No, it's not a Game Pass game. There's a game coming out. Bright Memory. It reminded oh, me yeah. of that Bright Memory, like demo slash game that came out that was like a teaser yeah. for the bigger game where everything is like weirdly shiny and kind of looks like that and yeah kind of reminded me of that if it was like a competitive shooter that doesn't feel great i don't know okay i don't recommend playing crossfire x but i am still going to try that campaign when it yeah. does finally unlock because i want to know what remedy did yep i have only heard bad things about it though so, yeah I'm looking forward to that that's not surprising but it sucks to hear it's so weird. Like this game has been kind of announced like for a couple of years that it's coming, it's coming, yada, yada, yada. And when you just put it in the space of like free to play, like shooters at this point, like it's like you're going up against like Halo Infinite is free to play. You're going up against Call of Duty Warzone. Like, yeah, you're going up against Apex. There's yeah. like so many in this in this zone. It's like if you're not coming out guns blazing, you're going to be forgotten. I feel like no one is absolutely absolutely no one is talking about this thing. Nobody. Um, I didn't exactly. know it was out yeah. until yeah, it came out last right week. now. I didn't hear a thing about it. Yeah. Um, so I think that kind of tells you everything. Yep. Uh, more Game Pass. I finally got around to playing Lake. This okay. is a super chill. Um, I wouldn't say exactly walking simulator, but there is not a lot of like gameplay mechanics to this. Uh, you are a woman named Meredith who is returning to her small hometown after 22 years of being away. She's going there as like a little vacation away from her uh, computer job. This is set in the 1980s. It's a small town in Oregon called Providence Oaks. And you're taking over your dad's mail route for the time while you're there. He's on vacation. So you're just driving around delivering mail, delivering packages. You, you go up to the house, you go to the back of the truck, you take out the package, you go to the front door. Sometimes there's someone there to talk to. Sometimes there's not. Um, and you do that for like two weeks of in-game time. There's different characters. Like this is a game where you're like, oh, 
small town going back to it is going to be like a murder mystery to solve. No, this is just a chill time. You are just hanging out in this town being a male woman. Um, so you got to just be into like walking simulators, stuff that is low key and chill. I would say I wish the characters had facial animations because you just kind of oh. watch a, a couple, a lot of people talk to each other and mouse move and they blink, but they don't emote. Um, so that just felt a little stilted. It is definitely like a lower budget game. You can tell a small team. But I think it has some heart and I think there's some enjoyment to be had in that. Um, you know, it's just like a it's like a cozy game, fun time. Uh, it's no no crazy murder mystery or or subplot you're going to be going through. You will there are little arcs to some of the characters. You know, someone wants to be a singer. Someone's like tired of the small town. Yada yada yada. So the, each of the characters kind of have a story that you learn about, but there is no like overarching like big thing. It is just you're going to be a male woman and drive this mail truck around and around this nice looking lake uh, in Oregon. So I enjoy that. That was a good time. Yeah, they those do, games can be fun if you're in the mood for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There is a uh, video rental store. Everything's VHS because oh. it's the 80s. Yep. And best thing about it, though, is all the movies in there are spoofs off of regular movies. Like, you got Back to the Present or your Back to the Future knockoff. Okay, that's pretty good. You know, just stuff like that. So that was just pretty, one of my favorite things to do. I love seeing that stuff in, in games. Yeah. Um, last neat. game of this week, I've talked about it before, Disc Room. I yeah. just wanted to bring it up because I got my girlfriend like way into it. Oh, and, really? <laughs> yeah. She and so she, I, she, I was like, hey, you should just try this out. Like, I was, I was just playing Pokemon one day, and I was, and for some reason, I was like, I bet she'd be into this. Hey, you should just try this game out. And she tried it out. She is hooked. She, she describes it as, quote, it's like a Neopets game. Sure. Her what, what does that mean? The way she puts it is, the Neopets game is simple to learn. Yeah. But it's like really addictive. Yeah, and you can just like play it a whole bunch, and it's not that complex. It's like sure, yeah, okay, that's that's disc room. Um, disc room gets real hard though. Some of those stages are like absolutely fucked up. But um, just yeah. another good recommendation for disc room on uh, it's on the Switch, it's on PC. Um, a really good Devolver Digital game right there. Awesome. Uh, and that's all I played. So let's do some news. Yeah. There's a good chunk of stuff to go through. A bunch of small stories. Uh, first off, there was a little Q&A about The Last of Us show that is currently being filmed in Calgary. Yeah. Um, they asked, is it coming 2022? They said no. Uh, so a Makes lot of sense. headlines are coming out this week saying Last of Us TV show expected 2023. They didn't say 2023, but I doubt it would take that long to go into 2024. So we just know it's not 2022. Makes sense. Sure. Uh, there was an interview with Platinum Games with the CS CEO, president, and uh, vice president. A couple points here. Okay. Um, they kind of reiterated that they want Platinum Games to go beyond the linear, the linear action games. And we talked about this, I think, last week about how they're looking into like live service games now. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the ones that stuck out to me is that they want to revive Scalebound. And I've actually heard this in a couple places. I even <laughs> heard Phil Spencer mentioning, hey, we should bring Scalebound back. Weird. I haven't heard that so name in years. I would not be years. surprised. Like, I'm hearing Scalebound, like, enough times that I would not be surprised if this got announced somewhere. That guy had headphones on his neck. <laughs> yeah, he, there was, like, a dragon, and the dude wore headphones. That is all I could tell you about Scalebound. He was so cool looking. He looked like a normal dude with a dragon and a sword. Uh, they also said that they are open for an acquisition if Platinum Games Freedom is insured. I feel like that's kind of the ticket that like Microsoft usually says, right? Like I feel sure I haven't heard of any like we then demanded that they made a Halo map for us. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So. I don't know. Seems like it might fit, especially if they're both wanting Scalebound back. I don't you, Could you see Microsoft buying Platinum Games? Or Sony? Um, yeah, I, it, I, I don't know why this is. It seems weird to me to see like the idea of Microsoft buying, I for some reason, Sony buying them makes more sense in my brain and I don't really know why. You think it's like the Japan connection? I think so. Yeah. 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 That, Cause I would think Microsoft wants to get into Japan. Yeah. Looking to buy a Japanese studio. 
I mean, Platinum would be a great acquisition for them to do that. Yeah, and Platinum would be great. I, I, hear, I hear Square Enix being thrown out a lot. Capcom. Yeah. Um, which, from what I understand, Capcom was in the boat of looking to be purchased until Monster Hunter World came out. Yeah. And just, like, they now they're, like, flying. Now they've made enough money to be totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. Scalebound. Wow name i haven't heard of in a long time um a third sonic the hedgehog film is in development along with a knuckles live action paramount plus series with idris elba reprising the role well that's kind of i mean i did i wasn't expecting any difference different it's kind of spoilers that knuckles doesn't die in sonic 2 i mean there's no way <laughs> knuckles is going to die are you kidding me they just kill him off at the end. I mean, it's a kid's movie. No one's going to die. <laughs> yeah. Ever in these, right? So, yeah. I mean, sure. Okay. Stay tuned for a TVP. About Honestly, these things. probably. I like the Sonic movie, like, a decent amount. So, I'm cautiously optimistic about this. I mean, I'll... I'll see the second one for the first reason I saw the first one. Just sheer curiosity. I don't sure. think I would say I like it. I, 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 when people ask me how was that movie, I tell them it's a fine kids movie. Sure, that's about it. So, I don't know. Guess we'll see. Good thing I still have my Paramount Plus subscription. Yeah, thank God. Do, well, do you, something with it after that Halo show. I was gonna say you're gonna have to hold on to it anyway for Halo, so why not just yeah. keep it? Um, all right, this is definitely not big news, but I'm excited about it. Uh, Lego announced a Horizon Forbidden West set, and I think it looks real nice. Um, <laughs> it's the tall neck, and it yeah. comes with an Aloy minifig. Um, oh, yeah, I just noticed her. <laughs> yeah, that tall neck, though, it's like it's like 13 inches tall, which is a pretty nice size. Um, and the big deal about it is that it has a great piece to price value. And if people don't know, like the Lego pricing, you want like 10 pieces per dollar right this is 80 bucks and it's 1200 pieces so uh, i've decided this is going to be my next uh lego purchase after i finish my current treehouse that i'm working on cool that comes out may 22nd for any other le people interested in lego bioshock movie in the works at netflix okay I, I could have sworn we like there was rumors about this for a bit, but this is confirmed completely I mean, now. Huh? There's been rumors about a Bioshock movie for like eight years. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely been people wanting it for sure. Did it, does it have like names? The fact that Netflix is doing this now makes it seem like, oh, this is going to happen. Gore Verbinski attached to the helm. I believe that was the original one. I don't know if they're still Oh, attached. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I see. Okay. But I was just scanning for partnered names. with Take-Two Interactive, as well as Vertigo Entertainment, which publishes a lot of movies. Um, no, fil no writer or filmmaker is on board at this time. But apparently the deal has been in works for almost a year. So I bet this is very real. And then I got to ask you is, how would you make a Bioshock movie? Like, what would you have to change, you think? I don't know that you have to change very much, honestly. Like... Well... Main character, you go, he has to start. He has to talk now, right? Yeah. Like you have to see that person. You're not just. It's not going to be a first person thing. So you're going to see that person. Yeah, I'm Here's trying to thing. think of what you do with him. Well, in in Bioshock One, like it was all about finding the little sisters and then choosing to kill them or not to get a power up. There is no way anyone is killing a little girl in these to get a power up. Yeah, I mean, most people, I think, when they played that, didn't die either though right like i would assume i would assume not but i'm just saying like yeah. there's not going to put that in a movie like no one's going to cheer like yeah kill that little child so that you get an electric fist <laughs> um i mean there and, definitely is probably going to be needles that they take that gives them a power or something that i could see sure. that I think there's going to be only one little sister and she's definitely going to have more. Okay. She's going to have like a personality as opposed to being just like, Oh an yeah. Object to kill or put into the wall. Sure. She'll have like a name and, and like a, 
like it'll almost be kind of like a last of us thing where they'll be, they'll be like a team a bit that's my guess okay i could see them doing a couple little sis like literally like triplets or something like sisters or something but yeah you're right giving them more character or at least names <laughs> yeah. yeah who do you think you would uh, get to play andrew ryan oh hmm I'm trying to think of somebody that like can monologue like a uh, Willem Dafoe without the creep factor to it. I feel like you need someone that can be kind of smarmy. The one that I heard that I was I was pretty interested in is Bradley Cooper. Okay, sure. Like I literally thought of his character from um, what was that one that just came out? Night Nightmare on Elm Street. Nope, that's not what just came out. No, nope, Nightmare <laughs> Alley. Nightmare Alley. That's what. I yeah. thought of his character there with like the mustache. Sure. Okay. I'm I don't remember his name, but whoever played uh Oh my god, I'm trying to remember in Hawkeye, the dad. I can't remember his character's oh, name okay. even. Okay, I don't know him either, but sure. He's not like a big actor as far as I know. I don't yeah, I don't think so. I don't think he's a big actor. Again, are you just picking actors you've seen that have a mustache? <laughs> no, he he has a smarmy like shittiness to him when he okay. talks. Do you think it do you think the movie takes place like it's the Bioshock 1 story or do you think it's like the fall of Rapture? Uh it might even be the creation of Rapture or something like an origin okay, so of like, some sort. Per, like very pre well, so then here's the question is like, oh, maybe um, Andrew Ryan is the protagonist, like the main character that we follow. Maybe I feel like they would want to get a big daddy in there somehow. Yeah, they probably would have the creation so maybe of the big daddies like, happen. Maybe it would be like the Bioshock 2 story, because aren't you like the first big daddy? Like you become the very first big yeah, daddy. Yeah, the, the like prototypical game. one or whatever. Yeah. Isn't like the whole thing, like you are saving the little sisters or something like that. I, I can't quite remember the full ending, but I feel like that would be closer to a movie script as the second game. Yeah. I want, I wonder if it's like an actual Bioshock movie, like we kind of are assuming or set in the universe because then you can kind of just do whatever all they need is a man and a lighthouse essentially <laughs> and yeah, then it that's works the, i feel like they would want to do rapture because that's the thing everyone knows i that's think a it's a misstep point. if they don't yeah, frankly i feel like they would because because again if you like if you don't do the rapture you don't get the big daddies and stuff you don't get the little sisters yeah uh so i feel like the first one has to be rapture related and then maybe it's like an end credit scene with about the lighthouses and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could do... You could do some cool stuff in there. Uh, I wonder if it would be more like a... Thriller or an act, more action-y. Like, which way they would lean on that as well. Because you could do a few different things, too. I, th I, bet it, I bet it'd be like, you know, your typical action thriller but there's like some creepy stuff to it like i'm yeah. gonna be pretty close to the tone of bioshock honestly like just go watch the shape of water that's a bioshock movie <laughs> sure like it looks like a bioshock movie i feel like it's creepy enough and not creepy enough to be a bioshock movie that, and that's a great movie you should just go watch the shape of water um but you know it's on netflix i'll like i'm gonna wa i'll watch it yeah yep. yeah of course yeah stay tuned there's a, for a tvp yeah probably um all right i mentioned it last week that there's rumors that the following day we're gonna get a bunch of call of duty news and yes we did oh um, okay they came out it's a sequel to modern warfare from 2019 it's gonna be on a new engine uh it's, you know it's gonna be modern warfare 2 and as well <laughs> right. as warzone right they're rebuilding warzone and the game from the ground up um, there's some kind of new sandbox mode, which I have no idea what that exactly would mean. Hmm. And, uh, it is infinity ward making it again, which, okay. um, the kind of thing, I think the biggest news here is how early they're talking about the new call of duty. Typically we hear about the new call of duty, like at E3 and then it comes out in the fall. This is, oh yeah. It's February. So that's got to tell you how much people are not into Vanguard. Yeah. Yeah. Man, new engine. 
it, I'm interested to see some early looks at it when they show that. I want to see what it looks like. Uh, Nintendo announced that starting May 23rd it'll, of uh, 2022, it will no longer be possible to use a credit card to add funds to your 3DS or Wii U eShop account. Starting August 29th, it is no longer possible to use eShop card to add funds. And that the it'll be... Um, They'll be closing down the shop in March of 2023. Those two uh, systems. Sure. That seems like that was going to happen at some point, probably. Yep. So, I mean, this just kind of starts the whole conversation of like, what are we going to be missing out on? And what what would you recommend people should play right. from those respective shops? Is yeah, anything yeah. come to mind for you? No. This is why I'm a fan of emulators and emulation. People will keep this shit going even if it's gone in some form. A lot of the stuff that I would recommend, it, you know, it had physical versions, but they're just like super expensive or hard to find. So there's like a lot of good 3DS games. I'm a massive fan of the Professor Layton uh, Ace Attorney crossover game. Uh, sure. So I would definitely recommend that one. Um, what else is good? There's a lot of good like just uh, non- uh, physical ones, the uh, Box Boy series, uh, Pushmo, yeah. I like that. Those are pretty enjoyable as well. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Oh, yeah. it's a weird 3DS game. Yeah, put Pushmo, man. They, I would love the, for them to re-release Pushmo on Switch or whatever. That was a good one. I'm surprised they. I, th I think they're. I think they did make a sequel to Pushmo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think I think it was also just Wii U. Um, I also found out that um, Picross 3D Round Two only ever got a digital copy in North yeah. in North America. So that's another one that you should pick up before you can't. Sure. Um, which I didn't know because I would have gotten it digitally anyways, which I did. So I didn't. Uh, the West, uh, sorry, Europe got a uh, physical for that. Yeah, Pushmo World. Thank you. Yeah, apparently oh, that's right. Pushmo had three three sequels: Crashmo, Stretchmo, and Pushmo World. Right. I think I got Crashmo. I don't think I played the other ones. Yeah, honestly, I don't think I played any of those. I only push, played the first one. I really liked it too. You got three more you can play. Yeah. I had a friend this week tell me he just bought a Wii U. Someone sold it to him for like a hundred and thirty bucks. You think that's a good deal? Um, he has a Switch. No, I don't. <laughs> you don't think it's worth it? I, I don't think it's worth it. There's I don't yeah. think if you have 130 or whatever it was to like spend and it you don't feel it at all. I I mean I'm not against it. Why not? Sure, but I don't think I would at this point. Yeah, I was trying to think like there's very few games that are exclusive to the with three the Wii U at this point. Yeah. Um they were excited about like Wind Waker HD, which is not on the Switch. So okay, um, okay. And I, I can't remember if they were excited about some Wii games because I because I, I thought they had a Wii, but they it seemed like they were excited about access to Wii stuff. I don't remember exactly, but the thing is, is I I've, could see Wind Waker HD like being announced this year. Like <laughs> that could come at any time to Switch. Right, that seems like well, that seems like it should already be on the Switch, which yeah. makes me think like, is it going to come to the Switch or is it not? Because like, what are you what are you waiting for? But yeah, sure. Like, I I would be surprised if that never finds its way to the Switch. You know, it did just find its way to the Switch or is about to. Majora's yeah. Mask on the uh, yes Nintendo that, Switch Online. That is true. Nintendo's answer to Elden Ring on February twenty fifth. Hell yeah. Have access to, uh, Majora's Mask. So I'm going to be real. I think they cracked me. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get that upgrade for those new tracks that are coming out. <laughs> and like everything else that they're putting out on it. At this point now, well, I feel more okay with it. Especially because... You're talking about the, um, mm -hmm. the Mario Kart 8 DLC. I'm talking about the Mario Kart 8 DLC. I'm also... Also, uh, Aaron still plays Animal Crossing. So there's oh, that right. expansion stuff. And sure. some of the N64 stuff would be neat. The problem with the N64 stuff is I would want that controller. Uh, and you can get it. No, it's sold out. 
Oh, okay. I bet it'll come back. I feel like the, yeah. the Nest and SNES ones came back. Yeah, no, they're when it restocks, I'll probably get it. It's just that that the N64 stuff currently has no bearing to me. But like the Sega stuff would be fine. I just don't want to play N64 stuff with the Joy Cons. Really. Sure. Yep. I mean, I don't really want to play N64 stuff with an N64 controller. Fair. But maybe the Joy Cons would be worse. Uh, no Man's Sky got another update this week. Yeah, the Sentinel update, I think. Sentinel update. I'll just read this point form thing of what you get in the update. Combat overhaul, new enemies, improved AI, new lore and missions, exobiology expedition, whatever that means, new weapons, weapon visual effects overhaul, active camo, <laughs> buildable AI mech in a Sentinel headquarters. Uh, sure. Apparently That's awesome. this is the 19th update to No Man's Sky. Wow. Tom Murphy came out and said they are not close to being finished. That I mean, that makes sense because the way Sean Murray talked about it before it came out is that this was going to be like his magnum opus thing that never ends. I think so, what's crazy is he's not charging for any of this. It is a little weird that he's not charging for any of this, but like he could easily have been like, <laughs> this is this is five bucks. He, he has he been charged more. He has the so, goodwill like, back. He could charge now for anything and people will I, I buy. Feel, it. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe that first year or so, it's like you can't charge for anything like this. Like your game is not what you said it was. Going it's to like be cyberpunk like, just being like, hey, we released the giant update. 20 bucks, please. And everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, that would that would not have been okay but yeah i feel like at some point they could say all right we're going to start charging for these and it would be like that is totally fine you've done it um but good for them like 19th major update and they're not even close to being done that thing is that is a ridiculous redemption story didn't realize it was 19 that is crazy yeah, yeah. all right that's going to do it for news we're going to go through a bunch of questions including some questions from last week Yes. Top down perspective at gmail.com is the email address at TDP podcast on Twitter, the discord channel or John's PO box. I'll read this first one from Suku Suku. Whenever a game lets you design a character that is meant to be you, do you prefer to go with something closer to yourself? Something that isn't you in the slightest or somewhere in the middle. Um, I, if it's an action-y, like, if I'm playing, like, a warrior of some sort, I will always go a female character just because I really like, like, strong female, like, knights and barbarians. I think that shit is cool as hell. So I will always do that just for the aesthetic. If it's, like, an MMO type thing where it's supposed to represent me in this world, I'll probably, I try to go a little more towards what I look like or at least a facsimile of me. I feel like I never make the character like me. If I have the option, it's almost always I make a female character because I yeah. find that their character designs just look cooler. Yeah, um, and if you get, like, different armor sets or clothing or stuff, they usually look, like, way cooler, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of when, get them giving me a randomized button. So I can okay. just hit that a whole bunch until I find something I like. But, yeah, I'm rarely trying to make it look like me for the most part. Yeah. Sure. Rasterman writes, should Steam implement neutral reviews? By that, I mean reviews that don't impact positively nor negatively in the game's general recommendation while st still letting you express how you felt about it. Um, no, I don't think so. No? Why do you say no? I feel just, like this seems like a, a good idea. It just seems like a waste of time. Like, because people... I don't know. I already... Well... I don't know. As I say that, I already hate when I go to a thing and it's like mostly positive reviews and all the positive reviews are like, lets you take pictures of feet 10 out of 10. And it's like, well, this is fucking <laughs> useless information. You are literally telling me nothing except memeing. So. Well, I don't, but if you're a foot guy, maybe it's telling you everything you need to know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm the problem here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess I just kind of don't respect the reviews that as it is so maybe neutral would be fine well, yeah, i'm trying to think like with the implementation of it is it's like because i feel like a lot of the times the only time you're going to review a game is if you feel strongly one way or the other 
Sure. Which can often be like, well, if you already re- if you really like this game, how do I know if I'm going to be into it in that way? And I just kind of need to know like. J- so it, and in that way, if you're going to find like a middle review where they give it like a five out of ten, I forget how Steam does its ratings, then isn't that by definition a, a, a neutral review? They give it the it's just a recommend or not recommend. So like a neutral review is like, I guess I don't know how I feel about this. So why am I writing this? Seems useless. I guess that's kind of the question is, yeah, if you don't know, because I feel like is a neutral view, review just a description of a game. I guess it would be because the way Steam is like Steam doesn't do like a out of five or out of ten. It's literally a thumbs up or a thumbs down. A neutral right. review would just be like, I don't know. You play this character for a bit. It's like, yeah, that's fucking useless. You're not giving me well, any. Well, yeah, info. You, I mean, it would be a review where you don't have to select up or down, but you can still give your thoughts on it. And I'm just wondering is how. What is the benefit there? And if you don't, what are, I guess also my thing is, is if you don't know if you're going to give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, what do I give a shit about what you have to say about it? You don't have an opinion. Well, that's what I'm saying is, is what you're, what is if you aren't feeling positive or negatively in, in the sentence you are about to write, is, is that sentence not just describe like a description of the game? I would think so. Yeah. Like there's very base level. <laughs> describing the game it's like because if you're not then every sentence would be something like this game has a lot of rubber banding ai which i have no strong feelings about one way or the other (laughs) yeah sure because yeah like i I guess i don't really understand yeah i i don't see the benefit i guess i don't see what what the the outside yeah. th- the third party here gets from reading a negative uh, a neutral review that is not just a description of the game <laughs> yeah because even talking about it right now even the people that are like you can take pictures of feet or whatever even if it's a meme review they will still give it an up or a down because that's how they felt about that thing in the game <laughs> right and that person was probably saying like you can take pictures of of feet in this game <laughs> yeah i love feet so that's a good thing for me and then on the sure. other side of that it's you can take pictures of feet in this game, and I hate that this game lets you do that. That is a negative. Games should not let you take pictures of feet. And then the neutral version of that is this game lets you take pictures of feet. Right, exactly. That's the thing. That's the end of it. And that is ju- you are just <laughs> describing a game feature. And that, so is it just is it just like the list of things on the side? Is this game supports co-op, but lo- only local. So okay. that's so the thing is that if you go the base level of what tags are that's literally exists already because the community can like put in point and click adventure it, actually this was done for a while wasn't like i think before it became kind of synonymous for like i don't know shitty or something for like walking simulator was used kind of as a like yeah it's just you walk around like a negative yeah. yeah yeah and like that started because people applied that tag to stuff like dear S. <laughs> <laughs> and whatnot right um which i mean at, at, at that point it's like you have to then ask the reviewers like well are walking simulators good or bad in your right. eye because that's going to be person to person so i just and then they need to so give I an opinion need, i need the tag <laughs> i just need to know is this a walking simulator cool i like walking simulators yeah that's positive for me this is an interesting yeah. question and there's a kind of like a, a question a sub question people in the chat here uh is asking so would a neutral be used in situations where some things are liked and other parts are disliked i still feel like you're gonna say like this this game lets you take pictures of people's feet and i love that so that part of the game is good but it doesn't let you double jump so i don't like that so that part of the game is bad sure that point it's just you just listed two features this game has that's all i really got from that and the way this question is also written, by that I mean reviews that didn't impact positively nor negatively in the game's general recommendation. Like, the only reason why the reviews are kind of even a thing on Steam is because it affects the algorithm on how what gets, like, a little more ad time or, like, what will be recommended to people easier or, like, be on the front or whatever. So... I don't know. Do you want to write a review for something you really like and make sure that nobody else ever sees it? Or, like, something you really hate but, like, don't mind if other people get it on their front page? I think you would have an opinion. 
feel like this is more like is the benefit for the reviewer where they're like I I'm need to not get this sure out. how I feel about this game, but I right. want to write a couple paragraphs about how I feel. But I but I'm so in the middle, I don't know if I should give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So right. I don't want to be forced to pick one of those. And I think that just kind of reemphasizes the whole idea of like whenever you're reviewing games, those middle of the road games are the hardest reviews. They're the play. worst, for sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what the answer to this is. I guess, no, I don't need neutral reviews. <laughs> well, yes, I agree with you. The the But I guess my final answer on it would be give people more options, whatever. Sure. Like, yep. Yeah, that, that's true. Yep. For sure. If it doesn't take away from anything else, who gives a shit? Let people yell into the void <laughs> where their opinions aren't read because they don't go on the algorithm at all. Uh, VGC Kenny writes, this is a two-pronged question. People tend to complain about how the new Pokemon games look. However, it's been pointed out that even though they don't use all the Pokemon, they have certain, they have to model certainly hundreds of different Pokemon, not to mention the people in the open environment. Those things can be done masterfully, but that takes time. Do you think that Pokemon can take that time to make something looks immaculate, even throw in a few features fans desperately want and still maintain the momentum that has for the most popular IP in the world? Or will not releasing a game for three to five years kill Pokemon's momentum? I think we've talked about this a few times. The games are like the least important thing in Pokemon. So no, they could take time if they wanted to. Well, so they're asking like, if they took the time to polish the parts that were that we're calling rough, or I guess that I'm saying is rough, or that the audience is saying is rough, like yeah. Either it's the character models, or maybe I, you know, I mentioned the voice acting recently, yeah. Um, you know, and the lack thereof. Sure. Would it kill the momentum of of like this? Like every two years, a Pokemon game comes out in the main line. I feel like no, it's big enough that if they took a year right. off, it, it it'd be fine. They're not gonna. I, they, I mean, technically, yes, they're going to lose sales because they're not selling as many games. Right. Um, but I, I mean, I was about to say I don't think anyone's gonna get mad if they took a year to like make it better. But Pokemon fans seem weird, so maybe they would get <laughs> mad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think my whole argument is like I know this company has money. Yeah. So if they need to meet this two year mark, hire more developers. Sure. Yeah. Like I get you have hundreds of Pokemon to model. Hire a developer for every one of the Pokemon so that every model looks great. I know you have the money to do this. Sure. That's just kind of like where I'm at. I mean, you do say the Pokemon games are like the least part of the, the big franchise, but they do still bring in a good chunk of money and they are some of the more favored products in the, in that have the Pokemon name on there. At least I could say that for myself. It's like yeah. the only Pokemon thing I engage in is, is the games. Sure. Um, but I mean, I if it, if it costs you an extra, let's say it costs you 10 million to like extra to make a really badass Pokemon game, that Pokemon game sells maybe like 1 million more than usual. You just lost a shitload of money for nothing. That, that's a good point is they, they know they don't have to do that. Yeah. They can cut all the corners they want and they still sell a ton. Yeah. Um. So they almost don't care about their perception. And that's kind of the, the downside is like, even though these Pokemon fans get so upset and, and do all that, they, they still, still buy, buy yep. sometimes two copies of these games. Like, so to put it in perspective, also, we were just talking about Call of Duty. Call of Duty's doing a new engine. They're trying to like rebuild the series and talking about it early. Because people didn't fucking buy Vanguard. They got sick of the shit. If Pokemon fans got sick of the shit and they're like, this is garbage, and nobody bought it, you would see an immaculate Pokemon game in like a year or two. I guarantee it. But it'll never happen. People will just buy it. So, Or, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a different audience at some point. It's like, yeah, yeah. It, you know, Pokemon hits a, a younger audience, so they're they don't even care that it's like, oh, here's the next Pokemon. Of course, I'm going to get the next Pokemon. I loved the last Pokemon. Sure. And this one has even more. Whoa. <laughs> sure. Uh, the Phantom Aegis. There's a. F uh, I don't know what the follow up question is to Gabe Newell. Sean Layden. Oh, sorry. Let me for those who don't know. Gabe Newell of Valve. Sean Layden of Sony. Jeff Keighley. Uh, the game awards host who would you have dinner with for two to three hours oh jeff 100 percent. i think jeff as well uh he just seems like a totally affable guy 
um who would he he would just be like enjoyable i don't know sean layden's personality whatsoever <laughs> um and gabe newell is uh gabe newell kind of scares just, me <laughs> a little he's, bit he's just he's just a big pc gamer uh, who's Wayne to knives <laughs> yeah i feel like i would get along most with jeff Keeley. he seems very excited about video games i'm sure they're all excited about video games but i get it i know i just i've, ex- I've witnessed jeff Keeley a lot more yeah phantom driver whenever i play a game with alternate costumes like guardians of the galaxy i always get this weird feeling like i have to use the defaults for it to look right do any of you have weird quirks slash pet peeves like this when you game just as a follow-up, it is kind of funny. If you do change your costumes at all in that game, there will be parts where it just puts you into the default for, like, because you did a cutscene or whatever, and then it'll put it back. Oh, really? In that cutscene, it'll be different, and that's kind of funny. I didn't know that, because I, I did switch the costumes at the first, and I, just like this person, I I don't, for some reason, it just feels wrong sometimes, and I have to put them back in the regular one. The one that, specifically, the Gardens of the Galaxy is, I started unlocking the, like, horsemen the apocalypse yeah. horsemen ones that are really weird yeah and because like the eyes were like all white it's like i feel like i'm actually missing out on some like facial animation that they made for some of these more emotional cutscenes sure. because it's like a demon is trying to convey that they're sad and i was like <laughs> i'm gonna put you back to the regular one because i i'm i'm getting a worse experience i think the way I figured this out is I fucking hate Gamora's look in that so much. I hate her white suit, so I put her in just, like, anything else, and it would always switch for certain big cutscenes to her shitty okay. white suit. Okay. I like the white suit. I hate it's it. Big fucking shoulders. garbage. I like, I like the white shirt. Anyways, for you, though, do you typically change the costumes? Uh, yes. Not typically, I would say. Unless I, like, really don't like the look of something, I generally... Usually don't. Oh, yeah. I guess like a quirk pet peeve that kind of ties into some similar things here. I hate when you get a new piece of armor that's way better. And man, does it look bad <laughs> on your character. That's annoying. <laughs> I get that. Uh, I feel like a lot of modern games have fixed that by letting yeah. you like combine or change the way it looks. So it's like you want it to look like this other one. You can do that. I remember Tales of Arise did that. But for some reason, yeah. I was still just like. But I don't I don't want it to keep looking like this with the one sword that's cool because I want to see all the different swords. So, again, in the same thing, I was like, this isn't right. I need to keep it as like the basic what it's supposed to look like. What about games where like your character is, say, like wearing a hood for a bit so you can't see the head or like a helmet? And it's like, do you like turn Mass Effect, right? Yeah, Mass Effect is the thing specifically that came into my mind. Yeah, no, I turned the helmet off. Yeah, okay. For sure. Uh, Outriders had this as well, yep. is they would completely cover the face. And I was like, okay, that's fine. But like, I kind of like the character. I I hit random on a bunch and got a face and a cool hairstyle. And I wanted to see my character's face, so I turned the hood off. Sure. Yeah. I will say, though, when it comes to a racing game, though, like Forza Horizon immediately i am downloading the dumbest anime girl skin and putting it on every single car i can get yeah i don't know what it is i have an easier time when it's like an object in a game to just like make look like a giant stupid thing than my main character i have to look at well yeah but because the object's not gonna like convey emotion yeah or or speak in a cutscene. <laughs> well maybe um rinku writes so I'm in a strategic management class for college, a requirement for graduating, and it's surprisingly really easy to tie in topics to the games industry to help me better grasp topics and concepts. Have you ever tied in video games or stuff you're interested in in general when you were or are learning something? Yeah, probably. I'm trying to think of a specific example. I did constantly throughout college. Um, like... Anytime I could tie in games, I would definitely do that because that's just what I knew. It was also similar with um, like this podcast. Anytime I needed to like do some kind of art project that could relate to the podcast in some way, it's like, sure, I'm just going to design new logo art for my podcast for this assignment. And then I also get new logo art for my podcast. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. I definitely had a, a woman's studies class and I do not remember the topic it, that it was on, but I did write a paper and part of it touched on the Tomb Raider reboot 
and how Square Enix said because it only sold 4 million copies, it was a failure. Okay. And I don't remember what the whole reasoning why I brought that part up, but I do remember like presenting and explaining why it was almost weird that it was a failure despite them selling 4 million copies. It and had nothing to do with like women's rights in any way. Right. <laughs> I don't remember what, but I just, I do have that in my head. I can't think of a specific. I'm sure I did something in school that related somehow to something. I'm sure. I remember in like high school art class, almost all of my art projects was like, I'm going to draw this game character or I'm going to paint this game character. Yeah, I did all my projects like that on music and musicians. And then in college, it was writing more about movies in relation to the world, I guess. Oh, maybe I haven't, like, directly tied video games to something, because I haven't really had to since college. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm talking about schooling. I haven't yeah. done much since, so. Sure. Uh, Linebeck writes, do you believe that nostalgic pandering has gone out of hand? <laughs> Not just in video games, but media in general. If so, who is to blame, if anyone or an entity, and what could be done about it? I like being pandered to. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of there with you. Like, you know, stuff comes to mind like Spider-Man No Way Home. The reasons that movie was so great for me was straight up nostalgia pandering. Um, the reason why I like The Mandalorian... Uh, so much is because of a bunch of weird pandering that it does with characters that I haven't thought about in decades. Uh, I don't quite get the whole being upset about like references and stuff like that because it's like I can guarantee everyone's going to have some kind something some property where they're going to be like oh I loved it back in the day and if that came back that'd be so cool and like a new thing right like everyone yeah. has nostalgia for something uh, yeah I can understand, I, like, being upset about, like, rebooting and bringing back all these old properties as opposed to, like, making new ones. I get that, but I feel like it's a bit of a separate conversation. Gotcha. They're saying in chat, I had the Book of Boba Fett in mind when I wrote this question. I can kind of see what you mean. Like, why are you thinking, like, why is it Boba Fett? Oh, because he has a name? Like, is that the type of pandering you're talking about? I think I think the problem here is the Book of Boba Fett is a bad TV show. The, yeah, it... But there there are good TV shows that pander to nostalgia and then and we don't refer to it as pandering because we like it. Oh, I see. I think that stuff directly ties in. I think that's more used to tie into other stuff more than it is pandery necessarily. Uh, whether or not they need to tie in to that stuff in that move in that show specifically. I don't know that maybe that's a different conversation we could have because. They probably didn't need to, but, um, so, but yeah, I kind of do understand a little bit of just like, eh, when, when you're not the one in on it, for example, people love ready player one. I don't have nostalgia or care for like 80s stuff in the way that a lot of people that really like ready player one do, which is why I don't like that book very much. And I thought that movie was just kind of a mess in general. Yeah. I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty separate in terms of quality for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The like the book is definitely way more references where the movie is just whatever. It's what it is. So like I get when the pandery is not on something that you care about because then it's kind of like eye rolly. I d I get it, but I don't really have. Yeah, a and I think of like it. um, I think of like Space Jam Two where it was just like this is yeah the rest of the movie, and it's like they did reference and show a ton of other properties and stuff, and it's like, but I think. I think just because that movie was like boring and disappointing it was is why people are looking so negatively at the references i bet if sure. it had a great story people would not be upset that the iron giant showed up in the background of that scene sure yeah yeah that makes sense dead writes why do so many more people buy physical on switch than on playstation for reference last quarter 65 percent of software revenue was physical for nintendo but only four percent for sony i have thoughts do you have an, do you have an answer for this <sighs> i mean my first thought is that people want the ability to travel with their games if they want to change out easily and like not have to worry about sd cards or any of that stuff also nintendo's 
notoriously bad with online everything. So, well, I mean, the Switch you can download every game you can that you can buy physically. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would actually argue that portability wise, digital is easier to transport. Yeah. What makes me think this one? First off, Sony sells a console that does not have a disc drive. Yeah, the console that they sell that does not have a disc drive is extremely hard to find. So I bet a lot of people are just getting whichever version of the PS5 they can hit click into their cart. So maybe sure. they want the disc version, but the digital one showed up and they're like, well, this is my future for the next seven years. I'm glad I finally got a PS5. I think also, though, the it's it's an age thing where yeah. it is easier to gift a kid a physical game for their birthday. It is sure. a parent ex being expected to download something digitally as the birthday present. It also like and this is probably just like a an old person mentality. But the idea of like buying a kid a birthday present and not actually giving them something to unwrap, but instead like, hey, and I download it onto your switch. It almost feels wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's like giving like somebody money <laughs> or something. I don't know. I kind of like the gift I, thing. I, Kind of, and I feel like I can't speak as a parent, but it's almost like I want my kid to unwrap a gift on on their birthday. Yeah, and so I can either buy them, you know, Pokemon physically, or I can just download it for them, and then this, and then the act of unwrapping it, and yay, blah blah blah, or you know, it's under the tree for Christmas. Yay, I get to unwrap this, as opposed to just being like, oh, I already put it on her Switch. Moving on. Yeah. Even as like the gift giver, there is something kind of special about going into the store picking up a thing and then wrapping it like i don't know there is yeah, like a weird magic to, just like to it clicking on steam i gifted you this happy birthday it doesn't feel like you did anything like your yeah. the number in your and, bank account goes down a bit and that's it and which is weird because <laughs> like as the person on the receiving end i want digital more than i want physical totally but it's it's almost like you it almost, it like it's, a, it's almost a different transaction because like yeah i, I want to call it something different because it's not getting a christmas present it is i got gifted this thing digitally and it, it technically is the exact same thing but it, it's like in two separate mind spaces it's weird yeah yeah that's true um hebrew lantern writes what is your comfort show you rewatch when you're sad or sick i don't know well, oh, I've watched the I've watched the Good Place twice after like the initial all the way through just randomly. Okay. Uh, the Office is definitely a comfort one that I, we just put on and like have dinner or chat or whatever while it's in the background. Sure, sure. Yeah, I don't think there's one that we just like go back and like, hey, want to watch an episode of this again? Um, we do because we typically have shows that we just are constantly watching through. So there's like always like a new episode of something we want to watch. However, we do tend to watch or like make sure that one of the shows we're going through is like a really long one. So there's always episodes available for us that we haven't seen yet. Mm. And that's for the longest time. That was like Bob's Burgers. And then we kind of oh, Bob's yeah. Burgers. So, it, so yeah. it became Futurama. Um, right. Yeah. The Office was like that, too. And we did like a whole rewatch of The Office. It was like, well, let's watch the next the next office. Yeah. Um, but like we I, I typically wouldn't go back and like rewatch one of those just for the sake of it. Sure. Boko. Uh, you've been assigned the role of director for a new game. You can make whatever you want as long as, as long as you follow this directive. Make a game based off childhood experiences such as tag, moving, or doing chores. What do you make? Okay. I actually do think a like an actual like extreme tag game would be kind of cool. Like of the ones where people are like in the arenas where they're like jumping through like monkey bars and stuff like that to play tag. You know that? Oh yeah, we also used to play like floor is lava on the the, the playground. Is yeah, we had a few like weird kid games and stuff that you would make with just weird wooden metal structures <laughs> that you had. Yeah, gr grounders. Grounders. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious why there isn't more of those games, but I feel like you, you need to have like the the movement so well tuned. What yeah. You can do. Um, I'm glad we're getting some dodgeball games. Knockout City was pretty good. Yeah. Um. 
What do you think about like, oh, this might be a little bit uh, before like your generation. Do you re did you guys do pogs? What about like a pog game? <laughs> pogs was like very early. I, I don't know if we actually ever did pogs at school, but I definitely had some pogs as a kid and like never really used them. Yeah. It was a big. So I don't even I, know if I know the rules enough of Pog to make to make a game. It's it, about like making a stack and then you like, like slam down on them, right? Yeah, you would use a slammer, and then if you played for keeps, right. you would try to flip them. And the flipping ones would either be points depending on how you were playing, or for keeps, any ones you flip, you kept in your collection. So they were actually outlawed at my school because right, they promoted yeah, yeah, yeah. gambling. One just because you know people got up, kids got upset because you like you have to give me your toys. I mean, we had, did you ever hear of Crazy Bones? I had I so Crazy Bones was like the generation after, and that yeah. one I never got into because I was already a bit older, and that was more kitty. But yeah, I'm gonna had, admit I really crazy. liked the little the little plasticky dudes and their weird faces that they made. Crazy Bones had to be like the most '90s ass thing, because yeah, they were, they looked so dumb. But we had yeah. Crazy Bones, and and you would buy a Crazy Bone carrier, and it was like a plastic coffin. Yeah, um, yeah. Those got out. That was like grade one or two for me. Those got outlawed pretty fast because people were playing for keeps. Those were similar rules, if I remember. Actually, that was a weird combination of like, uh, if you ever played jacks and marbles back in the day. It it was yeah, it was more of what I think of marbles because you would like make a line and then you had to like lick them yeah at the other person and then but you also had like big ones i forget what the rule with the i think you were allowed to just like throw <laughs> at the other person's line yeah i don't fully remember um yeah i i don't know because i feel like a lot of these games are the whole premise of them is you need to do something with like force yeah and then it, so the game would be premised on like almost like a golf game of like you having to like time your a hit for the certain like power of it, yeah. I guess. Yeah. That could be fun as a weird little yeah, free to play maybe, yeah, thing. Every pog is an NFT. There we go. I made a million bucks. Oh. Let's go. Gross. <laughs> All right. You're up next with firm lineback. Lineback writes, what is the first game you played that you remember having a dodge roll? Oh, that's easy. That's Prince of Persia on the, like, what the hell was the PC? old PC? Yeah. I think the first one for me would have been Ocarina of Time. Okay. It's the first one I encountered it. Cool. Uh, BGC Kenny. Telltale, Don't Nod, some other company that makes games like that has announced <laughs> that they are making a game about a piece of children's media. However, it's going to be more gritty adult version of oh, said no. property. But they have promised that it will be respectful and nuan and a nuanced take. What piece of children's media do you want this to be? I'm going to say the Teletubbies. Oh, man. Yeah. I feel like there's enough characters in that show that you could build out some weird lore. What about Care Bears? That's a good one, too. And, you know, a lot of Similar. characters again. A lot of but, characters. You know, the hear me yeah. out. Every Care Bear has a non-fungible token <laughs> so oh, what if how about how about care blockchain bears? The, the only way the only way, in the care bears universe the only way to get these powers yeah or transfer these powers to a new care bear is if the last one is killed <laughs> yeah so that would imply and, and that's like a thing you learn at like the end of like episode one is it that top that revelation is revealed which makes you realize all of these protagonists that you are playing as have either killed someone or someone died and p transferred the power to them why do i feel like that th this is like a weird headcanon thing because of, there's no way they did this why do i feel that that exists in care bears where like okay i don't remember specifically but like i feel like there was a care bear who like somehow evolved their power to like have something maybe by caring more or some dumb bullshit but like you, maybe you could do something like you they murdered another care bear and that just like I mean, added their power on i don't i can don't remember a lot about care bears there's no way any care bear has ever died no not died not died but maybe like 
cared more about a person or like got really yeah, emotional. I wouldn't be surprised if it was like they really needed help in some way, and this Care Bear was like so sad that the sunshine power. Yeah. Did some? I don't. I have no idea. Oh, but that's maybe. a good answer, Mario. Let's make a gritty Mario. Based on the '90s movie. Okay, there you go. I was gonna say because based on like the <laughs> game, it's like what? What is that like? Like piranha plants with blood dripping out of their mouth. Oh like, hell like, yeah! Horror thing. <laughs> yeah, Mario has a gun that shoots fireballs. I don't know. Okay. Shoots bullet bills. I and guess. There's rabbits there. Yeah, yeah you gotta have rabbits. But the rabbits are now blue hedgehogs. <laughs> I don't know where we're going. This is God. yeah. Let's move on. Uh, Shane the Destroyer, you guys call games, you guys call games things like podcast games fairly often, and I'm a bit cautious with the criteria. Cautious. Curious. Oh, curious. Yeah, what the criteria to be that is. What about a game makes you want to give it undivided attention versus what about a podcast game makes you want to listen to or watch something in the background? I think this is an easy answer. Grinding. Yeah, I mean, it's got to, the game's got to have some kind of repetitive uh, section or nature to it where you do not need to give it your full attention. Yeah. Um, uh, Lake was this for me. Because a lot of the time okay. in that game, you spend driving around the lake and going up to empty mailboxes and putting letters in there, and then you move on to the next one. Um, and I always turned the radio off in that game because it was either like easy listening music or country music, two things I don't want to listen to. Sure. Um, ways that I would, or reasons I would definitely turn a podcast off in the game, if first off, if the game has voice acting and I'm actually caring about what people have to say. Yeah, uh, Outsiders, Outriders was a uh, podcast game for me. There is voice acting and story in there. Couldn't tell you a thing about any of it. Yeah, I definitely skipped all that. And then, yeah, that's a good one because you're just like mowing down countless sane dudes in yep. a shooter for sure. That's, that's a good podcast game. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know. Anything probably like like single-player narrative I'm probably not going to put a podcast on unless I am like not taking on quests and it's just like I need to kill 15 rats to upgrade my satchel. Yeah. Well, what's a, that sounds miserable to me. So what's a way to make it a little more fun? I'm going to put a podcast on. Yeah. So it's I'm having a bit of a better hour. Yeah. It's just something to do with your mind while your hands are doing the mechanical thing to get it to the next part in a game that's yeah, really I mean, the criteria when like when i was a teenager and i was just trying to get the rock band achievement for get five stars on every single song on medium that was mindlessly boring for me so i yeah. muted my tv and listened to a podcast while i played 80 songs in a row on medium difficulty yeah that sounds terrible <laughs> <laughs> yeah or like monster hunter you after a while like you're just doing hunts for pieces of monster that you can craft into stuff just throw on a podcast and like smack some monsters around uh, last question from kimberly i recently played through earthbound and earthbound beginnings i love rpgs and i understand why earthbound is so loved but i found myself enjoying earthbound beginnings more I like the characters music and overall atmosphere more can you think of a series where you played a more recent game that is considered the best of the series but you actually enjoy the less polished earlier games more Mario 2 is still one of my favorite early Mario games, uh, including World and 3, even though, like, I know those are better. I just like okay. something about 2. Uh, Resident sure. Evil 1, 2, and like 3 are my favorite. I mean, po there's a lot of Pokemon games that I prefer, the older ones, by mm -hmm. far, for sure. Um, and that's a good one, because it's like, they definitely have made quality of life improvements going forward. Yeah. So even if I went back to, like, heart gold and soul silver i bet it would feel bad to play but in my head is like that's the best pokemon game sure yeah yeah um uh, i say that with like racing games too like yeah i have a lot of and maybe it's just nostalgia but obviously burnout paradise stands out for me but even on the need for speed run like need uh most wanted is probably what i would say is the best need for speed game i bet it feels real old when i go back to it most, uh, not most wanted. Um, a pursuit 
is a real good one, and they did the remaster of that, so that was actually pretty nice to return to. Okay. Um, I feel like I like a lot of games that mainly consider are the best of that series. Like, I think most people think Metal Gear Solid 3 is the best of that series, even though 5 is, like, superior in all quality of life stuff, really, but... Sure. Hmm... Yeah, there's probably. I like Zelda two more than I should, more than some of those yeah, newer that's ones. That's true. You, you do. I can agree to that. Um, I guess a lot of people really like Wind Waker, and I guess if I was gonna cheat, okay, I don't like Wind Waker at all. Uh, oh wow. <laughs> okay. So like I, but like to say that I necessarily think Ocarina is much. Yeah, I think Ocarina is probably better for me. So I guess that. But people still say that's... A lot of people say that's the best in those games, too. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, Zelda's hard at this point. I feel like once yeah. Breath of the Wild came out, it kind of changed a lot of, like, what is the... They're, like, so different now. It's like you have to be really specific of what kind of Zelda are you talking about. And, is, I mean, even yeah. with Breath of the Wild, you could still split it up between 2D and 3D. There's almost like three tiers of, of Zelda games. That at you have least. To like be specific now at, yeah. the, at this point. Yeah, at least for sure. That's going to do it for questions. If you would like to send in a question next week, it's top down perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, the discord channel or John's PO box. What is your game of the week? Uh, Infernax. And mine is Lake. Uh, some things to look forward to next week. We will be doing our Kenna bridge of spirits episode of TDP plus. Um, if you haven't already heard the, uh, long delayed Neo, the world ends with you episode is live. So go check that out, uh, as well on the TBP side, the, our Boba Fett or our, the book of Boba Fett episode is live. And yeah. thanks again to I am 3d Homer for guesting on that. Our next TBP is going to be on the Uncharted movie that comes out tomorrow. The movie that is not the episode. The episode will come out uh, two Mondays from now. Right. And uh, if you have not voted on the March TDP Plus poll, uh, I mean, you can. There's no way WarioWare Gold is not going to win it at this point. So you almost don't have to. But you're welcome to if you like voting on polls. Yeah. It is available for you. Otherwise, thanks for listening, and we will see you guys next week. Bye.